In the conclusion of Revelation, after a vision of a dragon and a monstrous beast out of the sea, John sees yet another beast rise, this time out of the earth, whose overall appearance is not described, other than having two horns like a lamb, and speaking like a dragon. This second beast is also called the false prophet. His purpose is to promote the authority of the first beast with the ability to perform great signs. It forces all people to worship the first beast, and sends down fire from heaven to impress. The second beast makes the people create an image for the first beast, and breathes life into that image. The people must worship that image or be killed. Also, the second beast makes all men wear a mark on their right hands, or on their foreheads. That mark refers to the name or number of the first beast. That number is 666, according to Revelation 13, 16 to 18, which reads. Also, it causes all, both small and great, both rich and poor, both free and slave, to be marked on the right hand or the forehead, so that no one can buy or sell unless he has the mark. That is, the name of the beast or the number of its name. This calls for wisdom. Let the one who has understanding calculate the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, and his number is 666. The main passage in the Bible that mentions the mark of the beast is Revelation 13, 15-18. Other references can be found in Revelation 14, 9, 11, 15, 2, 16, 2, 19, 20, and 24. This mark acts as a seal for the followers of Antichrist and the false prophet, the spokesperson for the Antichrist. Marking has been common throughout society as a means of tribal identification, punishment, as a sign of ownership, of disgrace, and of loyalty to a pagan deity. Satan tries to copy everything God does, as seen in the creation of his trinity, the resurrection of his beast, and with the false prophet. Why not also copy his example for marking? Different authors have suggested that the beast represents various social injustices, such as exploitation of workers, wealth, the elite, commerce, materialism, and imperialism. Various Christian anarchists have identified the state and political power as the beast, other scholars identify the beast with the Roman Empire of the 1st century AD, but recognize that the beast may have significance beyond its identification with Rome. So why will the world accept this mark during the tribulation? To answer that question, we must understand the power and persuasion of the Antichrist. Let's examine how and why the mark will be implemented. While the false prophet will be implementer of the mark, he will be acting on authority that comes from higher up. As John tells us, he exercises all the authority of the first beast. And where does the first beast, the Antichrist, gets his power? The dragon, Satan, gave him his power, his throne, and great authority. Revelation 13.2 Satan himself will instigate all the terrible evil of the tribulation period with the Antichrist and the false prophet acting as his diabolical agents. The false prophet, working on behalf of the Antichrist, will use the mark to subjugate the world during the tribulation period. In addition to serving as a visible indicator of devotion to Antichrist, the mark will be one's ticket required for commercial transaction during the last half of the tribulation. This has been the dream of every tyrant down through history to so totally control this subject that he alone decides who can buy or sell. Revelation 13.17 tells us what the mark will do on a day-to-day -day basis. Those with the mark will be able to sell goods and services to support themselves and secure what they need. Anyone refusing to wear the mark will struggle to survive. The fusion of government and religion 
will put a squeeze on rebels, leaving them nowhere to turn. Those who refuse the mark will be shut out of society altogether. No one will buy their products or services, barred from employment and from shopping in stores or online. They will face bankruptcy and starvation. Given our modern financial system, it's hard to imagine a scenario in which Christians are shut out like this. But the Bible is clear that Satan's intent is not only to keep them from means of survival, but to force them to a decision. Will they continue to stand for Christ, refusing the mark despite the hardship promised? Or will they succumb to the loyalty demands of Satan and take on the mark to relieve that hardship? In many countries now, Christians face persecution and even death when they stand for Christ, just as those without the mark will during the tribulation. During that time, these questions will be put before the entire world's population, without exception. They will come in the form of the offered mark, supposedly to promote a good life, but with the intent to make clear who will live for Christ and who will yield to Satan. The core issue of the tribulation is who has the right to rule, God or Satan. God will demonstrate that he has the right to rule. For the only time in history, people will have a deadline for declaring their allegiance to the gospel. Throughout the past 2000 years, people have been at different stages in deciding for or against acceptance of the gospel. People accept or reject this message at various points of their lives. Some in childhood, some as young adults, some at middle age or as seniors. On this occasion, the process will be accelerated or forced because of the mark of the beast, so that all humanity will be consciously divided into two segments. The polarizing issue is the mark of the beast. The mark of the beast is simply a vehicle to force people to declare their allegiance to the Antichrist or Jesus Christ. All people will be polarized into two camps. It will be impossible to take a position of neutrality or indecision on this matter. Scripture is very clear that those who do not receive the mark will be killed. The primary purpose for warning believers about the mark is to let them know that when it is in the form of numbers, the name of the beast will be 666. Thus, believers who are going through the sequence of events of the tribulation, when offered the number 666 for their forehead or right hand, are to reject it, even if it means death.